Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Kenny. I'm one of the co-founders of Man's Network and here with uh, Mustafa today. Uh, Mustafa, would you mind just giving a brief intro about yourself? Yeah, great to be here. I'm the co-founder of Celestia and CEO at Celestia Labs. Yeah, so really excited about the integration, uh, getting Manta over to Modular DA, leveraging Celestia. And, uh, you know, by now, everyone's already probably, hopefully, experienced the new and improved Manta Pacific, which ultimately has the same user experience at a fraction of the gas cost, right? So, yeah. like, one of the big things right now is uh, with Celestia, right, being able to cut that gas cost down by 100x. And I just wanted to kind of understand a little bit from your side and stuff, uh, how, how does that happen? Where does yeah. that 100x come from? Yeah, so Celestia fundamentally provides a lot more data throughput than Ethereum has right now. So if you can imagine like Ethereum's data throughput is something like on the order of 10 kilobits per second, it's basically like a dial up error. But Celestia is, you know, 100x at data throughput. So it's bringing data, data availability from dial up error to the broadband error. And that allows for much cheaper uh, data availability costs and therefore much cheaper costs for roll up transactions. Gotcha. Okay. So Manta Pacific is now broadband. That's great. Um, and I think, you know, it's also a very strong sort of hallmark here because, you know, we are the first L2 to actually transition into modular DA. And so, you know, like I, I think on the one hand, it's exciting and nerve wracking to be guinea pigs. But on the other hand, I know that with Celestia right now, especially as the, the OP stack integration, you guys have fallback to Ethereum also, right? Uh, yes. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have an integration with Opstack where you can deploy Opstack rollup using Celestia as a DA instead of posting to Ethereum. But um, you can also use Ethereum as a fallback. So by default, you can have users post their transaction data to Celestia. But in case, you know, because Celestia is still new and experimental, it was only launched last month. So, use, so developers might have some reservations or want to see it being more DAO tested. So there's a fallback in the um, OP stack integration so that if Celestia goes down or loses liveness, then the rollup still can um, trans tra uh, can process transactions and fallback to just posting that data to Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense and is great news for us. Uh, just in case anything you know goes wrong, then we've still we've still got uh, the uptime to, to depend on. But at the same time, right? I know there's already other sort of L2s and stuff that are deployed. Um, so how, how's the experience going with them? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the L2s right now, they're still also on test that, you know, there's, there's projects like Dimension and other projects like Eclipse, they're all we're currently on test net and they're just coming to, over to mainnet right now. But um, and they've been, you know, testing on test net for the past year or so. And um, so they've had a lot of time to prepare to make sure that integration works correctly and test it and debug it and so on and so forth. Because the test is pretty much identical to the mainnet. Yeah. And so there's been a lot of work and efforts in the auditing, auditing the code, making sure that things are reliable and so on and so forth. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, it's really exciting. And, you know, like it does give us a lot of comfort to see all these other projects starting to deploy and, you know, having that smooth sort of experience during that whole entire time. Um, I, I guess, you know, another thing is just kind of understanding your transition as well, right? Because you guys recently launched the mainnet. That was like just, uh, like you said, a month or so ago, right? Yeah. Like, and so, um, what were you thinking at the time? <laughs> it must have been very nerve wracking. It's the first of its kind. Yeah, but, I mean, honestly, um, it was a very, it was kind of like very uneventful because oh, like he was just like we we only launched so many test nets. You know, we launched like three or four test nets before mainnet. So we we, we already rehearsed it so many times. So yeah, launching yeah. the mainnet was just like launching all the test nets. To the only difference is that there's a token now. Like that's the that's the that's the only main difference. But I think. Um, the real that it, and we 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 very we we do a lot of testing internally to make sure that the network can handle load. You know, we use we have a tool called Test Ground that effectively lets us you know spin up a network, uh, sim simulate a network with you know a thousand nodes, and you know spam it with transactions and see how the network reacts. So we kind of like make sure we have like stress test everything to make sure that have to see to test how it handles under pressure. But ultimately, I think the real tests will be over, over the coming months when rollups start to come over to mainnet, and we'll we'll get a test, we'll get we'll get a sense of 
you know, how you know, the network behaves. But ultimately, um, I think people have to realize that like Celestia provides way more throughput right now than I think mainnet. So it's like, you know, if Celestia, Celestia data throughput right now, you know, it can handle every single roll up on mainnet by like times a hundred. Um, so it, I think it will take a while also for the network to even reach that capacity in, in the first place. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So I mean, two points here, right? Like one in terms of the testing, especially now with mainnet getting the battle testing, you know, we're excited to be part of that experiment because uh, for Manta, right? Like we only launched mainnet about like two ish months ago. And since then we've grown to be one of like the largest OP stack based chains right now. We've got over 30 million in TVL. I mean, we've got a lot of on chain activity right now. And frankly, that is impacting the gas fees, which ultimately impacts the user experience, right? We've got things such as ZK Hold'em that's launched and, you know, to play a game, it, it can be fairly expensive for some users. And so we're really excited to see exactly what the implications of um, the, the, the Celestia DA is going to kind of uh, impact the users on. Right. Like, and really important to note here is that there's no change in the user experience, right? Like, it's not like you have to go through any extra steps, right? Everything happens on the architectural level, right? And the infrastructure side. And so uh, from a user experience, you're just interacting with applications like you normally would on Manta Pacific. Uh, and then one thing you were mentioning, Mustafa, was, um, you know, you were mentioning like, you know, Ethereum now. What do you like? Are you referring to like proto dank sharding or like what are you thinking about when you say like scalability as Ethereum is now? Yeah, I'm talking about now before proto dank sharding. Um, but even, uh, yeah, right now it's something like you know, 10 kilobytes per second or 10 kilobytes per second. Mm -hmm. um, but even with pro, even with the IP4844 with proto dank sharding, uh, Celestia also still provides way more data throughput than proto dank sharding. So that it will always be there as an option to make, to make sure that um, there's that there's a sufficient or higher throughput than what Ethereum can provide even with proto-dichroning, which will come in a while anyway. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, you know, to, to the point earlier, right, like you guys are the first of the kind, right? And so it's really a great milestone in the Web3 space. Uh, really excited to be kind of part of that step as well. Um, and, and, you know, where, where, where are you guys headed in the next year or so, right? Like what's the milestones here? So, I mean, the kind of like long term goal is centered around these like three objectives. The first one is, you know, like, uh, gigabyte blocks. Second one is million roll ups. And third one is a billion light nodes. <coughs> and that's kind of like enc encompasses the like long term roadmap of the Celestia community you know, around having, make sure, making sure we have big, as big blocks of, that are secure with light nodes and having million roll ups to actually have adoption on Celestia. And all of like Manta Pacific are a very important uh, part of that. And um, yeah, I mean, there's still, as I mentioned, this Celestia has upgraded um, data, data availability from dial up to broadband. But there's still a lot of work to do to also upgrade the developer from broadband to the fiber era and beyond. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So all that one gigabyte block size and everything is coming in the next year or so? That, uh, uh, probably not in the next year, but like it's maybe in the next few years. Uh, but over the next year, I would say um, over time there will be incremental block size improvements. I would say you know I would predict like it would double each year. So right now the maximum is eight megabytes, and the next year we would we would have not, not double but times four because it's a it's, it's like a data square. So so next year we might have thirty megabytes, um, and then after that we would we would have uh, hundred megabytes, and then five hundred and, and a gigabyte. Gotcha. Gotcha. And and I think one of the other sort of conversations in the space right now is like, is there really enough activity to fill up that block space? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, so it's an interesting question. There's definitely a situation where uh, it seems like there's too much infrastructure and not enough consumer facing applications. But I do think that will change over time because that infrastructure was needed to make a lot of these consumer facing applications possible. Just like, for example, um, certain applications on the Pacific are only possible as a roll-up. Like, yeah. It has locations like ZK Holden. And, um, but also I think there's this element of induced demand. The fact that, you know, so a, a, a lot of applications don't have a lot of users because the gas fees are so high. The transaction, right, the transaction right. fees are so high. But with gas fees, with transaction fees being much lower, 100x lower, I think that will induce a lot of 
end user demand to actually use those products because the friction to use them and the cost to use them would be much, much lower. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the actual user activities, right? Like I know right now also there's this trend of thinking about being on a more generalized L2 versus being your own app specific rollup versus being an L3. Right. Um, and I know that especially for generalized L2s and app chains, you guys definitely offer, you know, that direct value. I'm curious to know how does, how does Celestia interact on the L3 side? Yeah. So, um, Celestia is very much built in, built with it in mind to support as many rollup pieces as possible, both general purpose rollups, but also the application specific rollups. As I mentioned, uh, like on, on, you know, with Dimension, there's a, there's a, there's a project called Dimension as deployed. That makes it very easy to play rollups on Celestia, if you have rollups specifically. So there's, there's like 10,000 rollups deployed. Um, and I can, like Celestia fundamentally enables that because it makes that you, you can post as little or as much data as you want on Celestia. Whereas like with Pro DAG sharding, um, it only supports three data blobs per block. So you can only have a hundred kilobytes. You can only buy a hundred kilobytes of data at a time. Mm. It's not very conducive towards application specific rollups. But with Celestia, it enables application specific rollups because you can buy as little as 500 bytes of data at a time. Um, and so it is very good for um, application specific rollups, but also L3s. Yeah. So you can, if you imagine if you have L3s on Mac and Pacific, you can imagine uh, they need cheap data costs, but they also need to be able to uh, have low overheads for posting the, or back, batches of blocks. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, having L3s on Mantic Pacific is definitely one of our uh, goals for 2024 as well. We already have some applications right now that are looking into becoming L3s, um, specifically for, you know, that extra scalability. And so I think like with that combined with Celestia DA, it's going to be a very, very powerful and great user experience. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today. Uh, anything else on your mind here, Mustafa? Uh, not specifically, but I'm just very excited to see uh, how you know user experience on Manta and applications like CK Holden, especially as you know the, the gas the, the the data fees are pretty much practically you know in the fraction of a cent now. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's a lot of projects on Manta Pacific right now. We've got about a hundred plus different ecosystem projects deployed. And um, a lot of them are very much, including the community, we're very much looking forward to the, the transition over to Celestia DA. So we're all very excited for that and glad we completed that milestone and looking forward. And thank you everyone for all the support that you guys have been giving us thus far. Um, looking forward to this very fruitful partnership with Celestia. And uh, yeah, cool. Thank you, Mustafa, for being here and taking thank the you. time. Thank you for having Cheers. Me. Cheers. All right.